just an hour, a record number of graduates will walk in today's 140th University of Washington commencement ceremony. You are looking at a live picture here at Husky Stadium. It holds 70,000. We're, we're expecting about 50,000 people, all family and friends, all excited, all emotional, as they will watch 5,700 graduates, which will be a brand new record across the country. Welcome, everybody. I'm Gard Swanson, along with Aaron Mayofsky. This is the Purple Carpet Show, and everybody is so excited about today. And Garth, this is such a huge day for everyone. The sun is out. It's pushing 70 degrees here at Husky Stadium. And you know nearly 4,400 bachelor's degrees are going to be given out, and 250 will get their PhD. And something really cool you want to check out is 165 faculty members will be down there as marshals or be walking yeah. on that purple W down there to get this day going. It it, well, you know, it takes so many people, too. You mentioned about the marshals down here. This is a monster event for the university and so important. Yeah, we do have a, a list of lineup here that we're going to talk to. We're going to talk to Anamare Kause, the president, and we'll also talk to a very special speaker, the university marshal. He's been around for a while, Ron Moore. Yeah, r r and Norm Dix. Norm Dix is a congressman. He, uh, with 36 years in office, Norm will be joining us in just a minute. He has some funny fish stories, by the way, that you, <laughs> ju you just have to see. And also, Christine Gregoire, the two-term governor here in the, at the, uh, the state of Washington. She did a terrific job. She had uh, passed so many reforms when it came to education. Of course, she graduated back in 1969. She'll be a part of this uh, deal, too. Here she is, the commencement and speaker. And it's so great to see folks like Christine Gregoire come full circle and just be back with us here today and really give back to the purple and gold. Yeah. Also giving back today, she's also a part of our broadcast team. She's also walking. She's a graduate or will be a, officially a graduate in, in about an hour. Let's send it down to our other team member today, Rio Barber. Rio, where are you right now? All right, hey there, Aaron and Guard. We are back here at the practice fields where all the students are lining up and there's a lot of great energy. Are you guys excited? Yeah! 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 It's, it's feeling like football season over here. Yeah, so we're very pumped for today. Well, Rio, we want to know, tell us a little bit about your garb and what you have on. It looks a little different. It's very special yeah. to you. Very special indeed. I actually have a lot of family in the Philippines today. And as a secretary for the Filipino American Student Association, we had our graduation last week. And so you can see a couple other of us too, representing our Philippines. And I want to give a big shout out to my grandma in the Philippines and all my family watching live at 3.30 in the morning right now. I love you guys. And thank you for cheering me on, even behind a screen. And Rio, one more thing. You know, you can get your grandma and folks to see because you can hashtag out yes. UWGrad15 to get all those social media apps going. Hey. Mm -hmm, that is right. So all you grads, if you have any selfies, we need some UW <laughs> hashtag 15, all right? Show yeah. some pride. Let's go dogs. Yeah, hey, before you go, we all know it's about social media, but what are you graduating with? Because I know you're a communication major and something else, right? Yes, I'm a music minor. So I'm excited to continue singing whenever I can and also hopefully be on TV one day. All right, so what uh, what will you be singing today? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna oh put the, the pressure you know, on you. We might have to save that one for later. Okay, we'll keep the people interested. Have a little special something for you later on. But hey, can we get a go, dogs? Go dogs! Woo! Back to you guys. <laughs> All right, thank you, Rio. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, Rio. You know, it seems like just yesterday that I graduated. It was a little ways away, and it was just over the way at HECED. But now that we're here at Husky Stadium, there's so much room for everyone. Right. And this school, as you know, Guard, is so full of rich tradition and history. And let's take a look back now at some of the tradition of the University of Washington. <laughs> When they're freshmen, they come by and they touch the columns in, during their first few days here. Uh, at freshman convocation, which is sort of the opening welcoming ceremony for all the freshmen and their families, the next time they're going to see those columns is when they graduate at Husky Stadium. So they're sort of the bookend symbols for their college career. Graduation history runs deep. Back in 1861, the UW was known then as the Territorial University of Washington. Graduation was the goal. Recruiting students was a bigger challenge. There were no students, no, no, really no college level students. The first president of the university, Asa Mercer, hired a couple of Indians, got in a canoe, and canoed up and down Puget Sound from Bellingham to Olympia, visiting logging camps to get students. It's sort of symbolic of that idea of, you, of setting a star high goal, you know, for, for the graduates, I think. 
We had a university here in the most unlikely of circumstances, six months into the Civil War, but here it is. The school struggled at first, closing three times, but 15 years later, with the courage and strength of founding members, the UW had its first graduate, Clara Antoinette McCarty Wilt, earning a bachelor's degree in science. This year, more than 5,000 students will walk in commencement, earning degrees from 180 majors the UW offers, and taught by some professors who've won prestigious awards like the Pulitzer and the Nobel Peace Prize. Find out about the professors that are here. Find out about their accomplishments. Find out about the, the, uh, the research that's going on here that is just changing, literally changing the face of the, of the planet. It's an amazing collection of people that have been brought together in one place that, that's very rare to find. We don't know what the ratings are. No, and the UW not. has graduated a myriad of celebrities. In 1995, Joel McHale, star of NBC's Community and the host of The Soup on the E! Network, earned a bachelor's degree in history and later a master's in acting. And let's not forget about Tom Foley, former Speaker of the House. Or what about musician Kenny G? All pillars of the community. And the future even looks brighter. Rebecca Hansen won't graduate for two years. She knows it will be an honor. People's faces light up, and um, I know I feel that same sense of sort of pride when I'm talking about going here. And I, I think about, you know, finally having my degree in hand and how that will just be, I, I don't know, it'll be a great sense of personal accomplishment, but, you know, I'll just, I'll feel even a greater sense of that community of people that love this school so much. We invariably hear from them. I'm so glad I came. It was a great day. It's a, a memory I'll cherish for a lifetime. And that's really what we're trying to create, is a, is a, a moment that will last a lifetime. And, uh, and it does. recruitment process, they got in Canoes, Bellingham, all the way down to Olympia to get students. Oh yeah, rich of tradition and history. Yeah. And I love it. And they, you know, go all the way to Tacoma and uh, Bothell with our yeah. branches here at the UW. 14,000 graduating today, Guard. It's going to be an amazing day. The sun is out. And another famous guy is our weatherman, Steve Poole from Como 4. He graduated from here. And we talked to him last year and he's bringing us this great <laughs> weather today because we're loving what it's all about. Well, you know, it's funny if we can get a shot of the people down here because they open the doors maybe 10 minutes or, or so and a lot of them are already ducking for cover for shade because it's so warm out it's going to probably push i don't know 75 or 80 degrees today and here's some of the shots right here you can see people are already shading themselves but man what an emotional time for all of these folks family members their friends coming out to support their graduates and it's just as important really not only just for the graduates but also for all the people who had that support system behind them to get them through the university of washington and you know i really enjoy about this university is they keep extending themselves and making things better bigger and better. And when I graduated over at HECAD, it was indoors. It probably wasn't streamed live on television like we're doing now. We have yeah. the hashtag UWGrad15, so all social media outlets can get going right. today. But this history is just full of tradition for me. I've been bleeding purple and gold since I was a baby. Well, well, how has the landscape changed, Aaron, over, over the years here when you walked the campus a while back until now? Because we've seen su such a big difference in this view. Yeah, you know, I've come back on campus several times here working for UW-TV, and I've actually just enjoyed it, going through the quad and seeing the cherry blossoms and seeing the students stressing out as they're <laughs> walking to class and getting ready for test time. I can always tell when it's finals or the end of the quarter because there's a lot of stress going on, but it's a good stress. It's a good vibe here at the University of Washington and I've loved every minute of being back here and I'm, I'm glad we're here today. Oh, I know. I, I, me, me too. This and We're just getting warmed up, folks. This is the 140th commencement here. It is the Purple Carpet Show. We come to you every year and it is so exciting for us. Yeah, we have a big uh, guy coming up next. We are going to talk to the Vice Provost, Ed Taylor. He's the Dean of <laughs> Academic Undergraduate Affairs and he's got a lot to say. He's the guy who welcomed everyone back in 2011. Yeah, a good guy. Keep it right here on the show. We're, again, we're just getting warmed up. The 140th commencement, they are already filling up the stadium.
You could not ask for a better day. You're looking at the pillars here in Husky Stadium. More than 50,000 people expected to join the 5,700 graduates who will be walking today. And what a special moment for all of us involved, Erin. Just a big day for everybody. It is, and especially for one of our broadcast team members. She's in the thick of it down there, kind of in the mosh pit for graduation. <laughs> <laughs> Rio Barber is down there talking to everyone and anyone and just letting us know how it's feeling down there. Are you getting excited, Rio? I am, and all these people are getting excited too, right? Yes. And you know, Aaron and Guard, we do have a great uh, a amount of international students here at UW. So I actually have a couple here, Da and Yuan. You want to say hello? Ni hao. Ni hao. Yes, and what are you majoring in today? I study economics. Biochemistry. Biochemistry. And do you have family out there? Do you want to give a shout out to anyone? Baba, mama, ni hao. Ma. And what does that mean? I mean, actually, I'm calling my wife, and <laughs> <laughs> she is uh, there watching me, I think. Yeah. That is beautiful. Awesome. And what did you say about that? I said, uh, hello, my parents. <laughs> yes, hello. And so we have a lot of great students here as well. Do you want to give any shout outs? Hi, Grandma, Grandpa. Uh, my brother and my family. Mm -hmm. Hi, family. Thanks for supporting me through college. I really appreciate all the support. I wouldn't have gotten through it without you guys. That's right. Hi, my parents, and thank you for coming here. And uh, thank you. Beautiful. And hey, what are all these courts for? Oh, this is uh, for my fraternity, and then this is cum laude. Very cool. Congratulations on that. And you know what? We have a really cool selection of hats going on here. Can you tell us a little bit about your hat? Yeah, so my cap, I got um, some LED light action, some LED lights, and then we got Owl of Wisdom, Shiny 1, 5 for 2015, and shout out to the Hoop family, to Hoop family for doing everything to support me, and girlfriend Samantha, I love you all. <laughs> He's definitely going to shine today. And what do we have here? Oh, everyone knows this reference. Tell them about it. It's a SpongeBob reference. <laughs> Mine says, thank you, family in Indonesian. And this is Tina Belcher because she's my life right now. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. Great idols, great hats here, and there's still more to come. So definitely stick around. We'll be back here too. All right, so, let's get it go, dogs. Go dogs! Thank you, Rio. It's always nice to see the Huskies down there getting yeah. into it. Awesome job down there. Keep it coming because you know Guard's going to make you sing a song. You let us know you could sing. Well, for most students, college is a four-year journey, but to prepare them for their life after the UW Guard is really what this is about. Yeah, their college days started way back in 2011 with the freshman convocation, and there was a special professor here. He is the vice provost, Ed Taylor. He is just a, a terrific gentleman. We're going to talk to him in just a couple of minutes. Well, we want to listen right now now as Ed Taylor did greet them in the many languages back in 2011. In Kuwait, Morocco, Jordan, we say Ahalan la Sahala, welcome to the university. Those students from China, Huan Ying, welcome to the university. Those students from Mexico, Argentina, Colombia, and Spain, bienvenidos, welcome to the university. But maybe W.E.B. Du Bois said it most simply, before the turn of the century when he looked to an audience and he said, here is the chance for young men and women of devotion, for young men and women of devotion, to lift up the banner of humanity and march for a civilization that is free, that's intelligent, that is healthy and unafraid. That's what we wish for you. That was four years ago, my four friend. four years ago. <laughs> yeah, and, and you were talking to a lot of these folks, uh, all of these graduates who are walking today. A special moment for you, and welcome aboard. It's really particularly special for, for me and, and my colleagues. I haven't missed a graduation in 20 years since I've been a faculty member here, and, and certainly wasn't going to miss this one. So we made certain commitments and promises to the, to the families and to the students that came here in 2011 that said um, that at some point four years from now, we're going to all come together in, in this stadium on a beautiful day, and you're going to throw those mortarboards in the air and we're yeah. going to celebrate you and we're, and we're here to do that now. Mm -hmm. 
And, and I know much of those students are loving the positive experience here, but really the UW threads that through their soul and they bleed purple and gold, and now they've got to take those positive experiences out into the real world. That's exactly the, the, the plan here. The, so part of what we said to them at the, at the very beginning when they came here four years ago, that this is going to be a journey of discovery, um, research discovery and discovery about something of yourself, um, that this is going to be a place about that's going to be about innovation, that you're always innovating here, and it's going to be a place about scholarship, and at the end of the day, that we're going to form community, that you're going to form friendships here that will that will change your life and that will that will last you the rest of your life, and that you'll go out and do good service in the community, and many of our students are doing that, and we're very proud of them. Professor Taylor, tell me a little bit about how you engage with a student. What do you do on a personal level to make sure you your message is getting to them? You know, I do this with a whole lot of colleagues, and you'll see on the stage there'll be some of our Distinguished Teaching Award winners who are there. There, um, there will be some of my colleagues in administration who stay very, very close to, to students. One of the things that we do in, in my program, you know, we've got one of the top undergraduate research programs in the country here, so we engage students in research. Um, we engage students in activity and, and mentoring with each other. Um, Courtney Dill is going to be graduating here, and she's been very active. She started out as a Husky cheerleader. She has, um, ever since, she, and I can hear a cheer for Courtney, the background. Um, Courtney's been a mentor for students, and she's going to go off and, and work in Baltimore and do Teach for America. And that, you know, that's the kind of student where she's been just very active. Um, I believe Danny Shelton, who is an um, All-American football player right. here, and Danny's Incredible. done pretty much everything you can possibly do. And I do believe that Danny, and he'll go off and and, and he'll go off and um, and serve in. Actually, he's going to play for the for the Cleveland Browns. Um, we've got more Peace Corps um, volunteers at this university than any place in the country. So we've got students who are going to go all over the world right. and, and serve in communities and that's a real pride point for us and I know it's a real pride point I know what you're gonna say but I gotta ask it grade the UW on a whole grade the UW oh my gosh um, <laughs> so um, it's an absolute a beyond an a 4.5 whatever we can give it but this has been and I say this without exaggeration somebody who's been at universities um, around the country this is is really the best in the in the country you can't yeah. ask for a better place for students yeah, th you, and, and you you are just so excited about uh, your students and what they accomplish because that's such good feedback for you because yep. then you know you're doing your job. Yep, 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 yep. Um, you know, and and uh, what we want them to do and be, you know, they get to determine that from here. We want them to be really, really good people. Right. We want them to be, to be good community members. We want them to be good to each other and form really powerful friendships. And then we want them to go off and find their professional passion, whatever that may be. Um, and they may be physicians. Some of them are going to be teachers. Um, some of them are going to be um, are, are going to be <laughs> pro <Yeah>. professors. <laughs> you, you love your job, don't <laughs> and you? Maybe even come back and teach <laughs> here. Absolutely, and we'll be proud of them. And and I, I say that half facetiously, but actually, some of these folks will get their doctorates and go on and come back and teach among us. So can I just, can I just go on the record and say you're about the coolest dude I've ever met? You know, I've often said that about myself. <laughs> 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 you dress hip, you look the part. Give us some words of wisdom for this <laughs> day. Teasing the dean. That's not funny. <laughs> so so well, words of of, of wisdom, just just be passionate. Go forth and use this degree, and and be great alumni, and and be passionate in the world, and and just lo love yourself and love others, and and just do good work in the community. Uh, you're doing fantastic work. Thank you. I'm honored. It's, a, it's great <laughs> to be here. Oh, it's great day. So happy you, yeah. you stopped by to say I'll hello. Be here. Thank you both. All right. Well, as we mentioned, there are 50,000 people that are going to pack this stadium, and also. We're talking about 5,700 walking, but those just aren't the staggering numbers coming up. Well, here's another number guard. Who is going to be the first person to walk on stage? Won't be me. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll find out a little bit later. We'll also talk to the University Marshal, R Ron Moore, coming up. And we'll get a lot more going as it heats up here from the purple carpet for the 140th commencement ceremony at the University of Washington.
You are looking live at Husky Stadium. It is the 140th commencement ceremony here at the University of Washington, and what a special day this is. In fact, it is such a hot ticket here. A lot of students were requesting at least 100 tickets for their family members so they could pack the place. I sure wish I could do that back in the day. I only got five tickets, guard. It was over at Hackett. Of course, it was smaller, but it was intimate, I'll say, and it was indoors. And who'd you give your five tickets to? Well, my mom, my dad, my stepdad, my brother, and my nanny. She's 90 now, so we'll say hi to her. She's yeah. still loving it. She <laughs> bleeds purple and gold, too. Today is the day to bleed purple and gold. And um, everyone can fit in here in this exciting stadium. But before the Huskies were actually Huskies, Guard, I have some yeah. trivia for you. Yeah. Back in 1919, they were actually called the Sun Dodgers. Wow. Did you guys know that out there, the Sun Dodgers? They didn't like it. So a couple years later, in 1921, they changed it to the Vikings. And finally, we got the beloved Huskies in February of 1922, so. Yeah, and that's that name stuck and everybody is super happy. Yep. Well, we all know that the University of Washington produces some incredible graduates here and they have a graduation rate, the UW, of 82%. And we look a little bit deeper into those numbers, man, it is staggering with just how successful these students can be. If you listen closely, it's the sound of learning, education at the highest degree. This is the annual undergraduate research symposium. It's the premier event for students to showcase what they've learned through their research experiences. It's a perfect opportunity to see the broad range of courses offered at the university. I walk through there and I see majors I had no idea existed before. I see topics of research that never crossed my mind before. I can go to undergrad students and have them tell me about their passions and have them tell me about their fields of subject that I don't know about. The UW offers over 440 degrees from 280 programs covering nearly every topic of interest. It's a student's dream to walk the campus among the brightest minds across the globe. I was just uh, going through uh, one, some of the top 25 universities in the world, so for my particular major, and University of Washington was right at the top of those. With Seattle, Tacoma, and Bothell campuses, the University of Washington produces and prepares students for the real world. In a recent admissions office survey, Nearly 70% of last year's graduates were working full-time, many finding local positions at Amazon, Boeing, Google, and Microsoft. I would recommend the UW. Um, when students first come here, you know, you think you have an idea of mind of what you want to be, and I guarantee 50% of them will change their minds. I did when I first came here. I wanted to be an aerospace engineer, and that went down the tubes really quick, but I had so many other options to choose from and a very supportive faculty, so I was able to pick myself right back up and keep going. It's a great place. The UW sets you up for life. In a recent GeekWire article, UW computer science grads in Seattle had starting salaries at local tech companies ranging from eighty to $100,000, with some landing $50,000 signing bonuses. And you have kids from completely different backgrounds with different ways of approaching ideas, different uh, not only cultural but also educational backgrounds that make their perspective different from anybody else's and that's also a tremendous contribution to how we address different issues this is kind of getting and university of washington students are hungry for higher education nearly 16 percent are in postgraduate studies and when it comes to student involvement in school affairs last year alone 87 percent of patent applications filed by the uw included student contributions. I'm from a really small town, so coming here to like the big city was a new experience, and there's a lot of diverse culture here. There's students from all around the world in the United States, and they're all here, and you get to meet so many different kinds of people. You hear different languages just walking down the street. But what makes this incredible university so attractive? It's not just the students who learn on a daily basis. The world-renowned academic staff also learns. 
I feel really proud to teach at a university that puts that focus on research because that helps the students when they leave this campus to know that they have those abilities, those research tools that communities need and want, and that, that we equip them well to leave this university and take their learning and their knowledge and to apply it outside of the schools. And you know what else is kind of a cool stat here as we look at the live crowd here at the University of Washington? 75% of the graduates actually stay here, start their families, start their careers here in the state of Washington. And you know, I do want to mention over 280 companies came out of the University of Washington between the faculty and the students. Yeah. Now we're lucky enough to have a couple of the gonfaloniers today with us. And some folks, what is a gonfalonier? A gonfalonier is the person who leads their, leads their department down the aisle there. So it's a very prestigious status to be the gonfalonier. We have Darky, Darcy Akers, mm -hmm. who is here with us today from the College of Engineering, and Christopher Chan from the College of Built Environments. Thanks for joining us, guys. No Thank you for having us. Well, Darcy, we'll start with you. Just tell us how much of a pride and spirit it is to be here, to be leading your department. I'm very honored, and it was really just an amazing opportunity. And how about you, Christopher? Uh, wh what are you holding right here? So this is my graduation cap. Yeah. Um, I'm from the College of Built Environments, the Department of Architecture. It spells UW in the plan. Um, I made this hat. It has lights in it. And, uh, and how long it. did it take you? Um, a, a few nights, a few, few late nights. We're used to that in the architecture department. And I, I want to see the top of this thing. Can you actually show it to the camera? What camera are we going to take here? Just show you, we can see the U. It says UW on it, right? Ah, oh, see? Now that looks good. That looks fantastic. Yeah. And Darcy, you are talking a lot about traffic. We're going to get into that where you're going from the UW, where the UW has prepared you. I've seen you've put this civil engineering <laughs> on your hat here. Talk to us about that and what you're doing after life after the UW. Yeah, so I'm going to go work for the city of Bellevue as a um, signal operations engineer. So uh, are you going to fix the traffic? I mean, uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a beast to get over here. It I was. mean, through Montlake now with all the construction, everything in downtown. Is, 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 there, a, is there a plan? Is, is, does somebody have any kind of knowledge to fix everything? We're trying, we're trying, definitely. <laughs> there's just a lot of cars, but yeah, there's definitely plans out there, and hopefully, hopefully it'll get better, but hopefully it can make an impact that way, too. And, but you're gonna be working in Bellevue doing this, right? I will, yes, I work on the signals there. Right, and, and, and Chick-fil-A, you know, is a problem over there, right, with the oh, traffic? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we know. <laughs> So we're, we're going to send a special text out to you. Darcy, yeah. we're heading over 520. <laughs> we need some help in Bellevue when we're coming there. Christopher, talk to us a little about your unique background. You're fascinating, dude. You have uh, an interest in furniture designing. I do. I mean, I think my degree especially is so versatile. I mean, I'm able to do a whole bunch of things that really interest me, but my degree has sort of like taught me how to think in, in that kind of design oriented direction. So I, th I think that's kind of why it's so interesting and just all these interests that I'm able to pursue. All right, real quick, we're running out of time. What you hiding underneath? What's on your lap right well, there? So when I'm not in studio, I'm a huge baker. Mm. I've made this almond croissant for you guys to try out. I'm working oh, on my yeah. almond croissant recipe. So oh, you gotta I, try this out a little you bit. You know what, and it's got, uh, oh. what's this on the top? It's, it's it, almonds, powdered sugar. You gotta be careful, you gotta you. got a black suit on. Yeah, I was gonna say, it. it's perfect with your, your gown, right? Mm. Oh yeah. Here, try some of that, please. <laughs> <laughs> try it's you. delicious. While Ooh. we're trying this, guys, though, we are going to thank you Ooh. for being here today. We're excited to watch you down there. And we are going to get down to Rio Barber, a fellow colleague of your guys down there. She is going to be walking in the 140th ceremony here at the University of Washington. Rio, are you with us? What's going on? Hey, Aaron, we are having a blast back here. As you can see, we are people that are no strangers to this mm. football Ooh. field. The football players. Hey, all right. So, hey, you know what? We have someone up here. Those of you who remember Danny Shelton, the 12th overall pick for the NFL. And where are you headed next year? Go Browns, baby. Cleveland Browns. You have your turn. All of us Husky fans. And hey, do you guys have any highlights? Highlights from this football season? Yo, uh, the biggest thing was uh, WWE in the locker room doing frog splash off the table. Nobody didn't get to see that. The Rock came back. And you know what? I remember as a student being able to rush the field at that Stanford game, too. That's awesome. Do you guys have any shout outs? I see you have wonderful lace, Polynesian lace. Do you have shout outs? This is my parents and all my beautiful teammates. Yeah, my parents, you know, I love you guys, all my teammates, and everybody, dog family. Grandma, mama, I love y'all. I love y'all too, Dad. <laughs> love my family. I love everybody out here. Love you, Doug. Love Cleveland fans. Dog pound, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Mom and dad, all my teammates, coaches. Friends, coaches, family, and God. To the family, go dogs, baby. 
That's right. And now, before we go here, there's a ritual, a very special ritual that they do right before they get on the field. So we want to show them how we do it. And I'm joining the huddle this time. Let's go. And that's back to you, Aaron. All right, Rio, you're doing a great job down there. Now, I know that you've had some fun with them. Later, we'll maybe hear you singing and dancing down there yeah. because you got a little voice on you, and guards going to love that. But we still have so much more coming up on the show. Yeah, well, standing by, a former congressman here in the state of Washington, 36 years he served in office. We're talking about Norm Dix. He's coming up in just a couple of minutes. And we'll also meet some very successful alumni when we return. Plus, we'll talk with one more of today's graduates and hear how excited they are to get their big diploma when the purple carpet returns here from the University of Washington. Welcome back to the Purple Carpet Show. We are just 24 minutes away from the start of the 2015 graduation. The umbrellas are out, the emotion is out, and it is so exciting here. It is commencement day here at Husky Stadium. And the umbrellas are out, Gar, because it's yeah, pushing 70 degrees here. I love this. I love being a dog, and I love sitting up here talking to all of you. Now, speaking of dogs, we know some pretty special yes. ones out there. There are a lot of successful dogs that have moved through the University of Washington over the years, over the years and some of them maybe not so famous in Hollywood, but they take a different light in the tech world. We know several of those, and we want to give you just a little sneak peek and a taste at what some of those successful Huskies are doing these days. Taking a quick peek at the UW, it's impossible not to mention some successful and famous graduates. Kenny G is the best-selling instrumental musician in the modern era, selling over 75,000 albums worldwide. But graduating magna cum laude with an accounting degree is music to his ears. I went to the University of Washington. That changed my life, too. I actually was in the, um, the marching band and the Huskies uh, marching band, like, I think the first year I was there. So I marched on the field. I did a lot of practicing on sax when I was going to UW. I didn't. I wasn't part of the music department. I, I graduated in accounting. I'm a business major there, but I lived in the dorms and they had these practice rooms in, in, in the music school. So I could just walk from my dorm over to the music school and I just shut the practice door and I would practice like, like six or seven hours a day. The university is so central to my life, to life of my family now for three generations. 
One person you probably recognize is Dow Constantine, King County Executive. Educated at the University of Washington, Constantine is in his second term of office and has won several prestigious awards for his achievements. And he's quick to credit his success to his time at the UW. When I started to be able to uh, synthesize those things, find the connections, uh, have them build upon one another and come up with new ideas uh, based on my experience here and my work with my fellow students. That's what was really exciting about it. A nerd is, is what they say. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden nerds became cool, I guess. And when you talk technology, Aber Whitcomb is right at the top. He's the co-founder of MySpace that mega social media site way before Facebook and Instagram, born right here at the UW. We talked with Aber from his new venture, Social Gaming Network, SGN, in California via Skype. Nothing like technology, right? I remember the computer science classes being incredibly challenging. Uh, when we got our assignments, our weekly assignments, I knew there'd be an all-nighter, typically, once a week, so I remember grinding really hard in the computer labs, taking naps under the computers uh, when we needed to. Uh, that was in, just some incredibly challenging stuff and, and very rewarding where I've learned a lot of my computer science stuff in those classes. From my college band, I was always playing all the places in Seattle. I, honestly, I, I've always enjoyed my life. I just really like playing my sax. I'm lucky that I have gigs. Gotta love hearing that guy. 75 million records all time. That's huge. But right now we're joined with probably an even bigger legend here at the University of Washington. We are talking about Ron Moore, the university marshal, who's been here for more than three decades. And we are so pleased to have you here today, yeah. along with your predecessor, Sharon E. Sutton. Hi. Hi, guys. So uh, real quick, I know you've been doing this for over 30 years. We only have a couple of seconds here. Well, is it sad that you're going to be tossing this over, the mace over, and passing it over? It's sad, but it also very it pleases me so much to see a succession and to see that the mace is going to be carried again in this wonderful ceremony by another great UW professor that I'm very right. fond of. And I think she's she bleeds purple. Let me tell you, she's got purple shoes on. <laughs> so I know, that, I know the mace is in good hands. <laughs> and Sharon, we want to talk to you. How do you yeah. feel about your background and your experience coming up to take this oh, role? Oh, I'm just totally jazzed about it. I've... I think some of my colleagues put me up to this mm -hmm. because they know I'm a total ham and that I would just <laughs> absolutely love doing it. But it's a huge honor. It's a huge honor and I love graduations. Did All you right. ever see yourself knowing that you might do this one day? You know, I didn't think about it, but one of, as I say, one of my colleagues actually suggested it to me that I would be really good doing it. And yeah. as we've been preparing for it, I've gotten so excited about it because I truly do love graduation. All right, let's make this official. Ron, you're going to be passing over the mace again to Sharon Sutton. Whoop, take those off. Uh, I'll handle those. Thank you, sir. This is official right here. Go ahead, Ron. The mace is a symbol of the governing authority of the University of Washington. It is present only when the president and the uh, regents are present, and it indicates that the proceedings that follow have official sanction. It's also a reminder of the enduring traditions of the university in preserving knowledge and imparting power to those who come to learn. Our mace is 54 years old, it's been handled only by a few university marshals in that time, two of us over the last four decades. And I hand it on to you knowing that you will carry it with pride and with honor, and I hope for many years. For three years, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very honored. All right, Ron Moore and Sharon Sutton, you are the head person now, the head marshal, and what an exciting moment. Love having the power. <laughs> the power, she says. <laughs> well, that mace is pretty heavy, and someone who's been working heavy for us today is also one of the students here at the University of Washington that's going to be walking in behind you guys as you guys marshal them in. We are going to toss it down to Rio Barber, who's been down there today and a proud graduate. Rio. Hey, Aaron. We are back here, and again, we have some really cool hats that we just found. You want to show them about yours? Hi, I'm Arielle. 
uh, this is my hat. It, all the pins are where I've lived all over the world, and the long time traveler is from a song by the Wailing Jennies that I thought was very fitting. Very cool. And what about you? Good to see you. Hi. Um, mine's a quote from my favorite TV show. It says, We're all stories in the end. Just make it a good one, eh? And it's uh, one of the best shows ever, and it's a great quote. Just and that show is Doctor Who, right? Yeah. Awesome. And we just found a really creative one here. What's your name? My name is Lucky. And what are you majoring in? My major is construction management. So you're ready to take on the real world here with your hard hat. And last, we have a zombie, zombie tag one, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Yep. Right. Awesome. So we'll just have a lot more going on. I'm sorry. We got to keep this moving, but there's a lot of great energy. And let's get a go. Back to you, Aaron. Thank you, Rio. Excitement is building here, and we have another guest with us yes. today. He served in the United States Congress for more than 35 yeah. years. Was elected 17 different times. Norm Dix joins us now from the 6th District. And, Norm, you're the man. You're a Husky. You're a congressman. You, di you did it all, didn't you? Well, we had a great run, and uh, the, the most exciting part was being here at the University of Washington and playing on the football team for Jim Owens. Yeah. We went to the Rose Bowl my sophomore year, and my senior year, my last play yeah. in college, I intercepted a pass to beat the Cougars in the first Apple Cup. Oh, oh uh, that, that makes that's me That's a feel great good. way to finish. And you know what, Norm, you still got the shoulders on you. You yeah, look like I a could, football I, guy. I think I could play, but. <laughs> yeah, I think you could too. Chris Peterson hasn't been talking to me about my <laughs> one year of remaining eligibility. Now, despite um, you know being in the athletic department and obviously focusing on academics because it got you to where you were today, but let's talk a little bit about your personal history and what you like to do. I heard you like to fish, and the tradition runs deep in your family. Right. Well, I'm from Bremerton, Washington. I graduated from West High School in 1959, came to the UW. And, uh, but my family, we were all fishermen. Yeah. And uh, my grandmother, Hilda Parker, caught 10 Chinook between Ooh. 60 and 70 pounds. Wow. And in one day, she caught a 66 <laughs> pounder and a 59 pounder, the daily double record. For, <laughs> and she won the men's trophy three years in a row. So Really? She yeah. looks amazing. You can see her up on the monitor right, right now, and that's what everybody at graduation is looking at. Your grandma, <laughs> you've got to be proud of her. Well, she was just fantastic. I caught my first fish with her rowing, yeah. and um, she was, she. we had a pop gear and worms, and I caught a little cutthroat. Nice. On Hood Canal, where I live today. Yeah, I caught some Copper River salmon the other day, and I and I love the Copper River uh, is incredible. And look at the size of this fish right here. That Norm, do you remember I that day? Fifty-four pounds. I had a double with Jerry Hermanson, fifty-four and a fifty. Wow. And uh, those were. T it took forty-five minutes. The fish was headed into the kelp, <laughs> and I yelled at my friend Denny Miller. I said, "Do something." And he turned the boat, and I was able to turn <laughs> the fish away from the kelp. And oh, man. And the UW certainly has, has shaped your life, hasn't it? Right. I, when I came here, I was a poli-sci major. I went to law school and uh, graduated from both, and then went to work for Senator Magnuson, mm -hmm. who was a UW grad, right. um, and uh, worked on his staff for eight years, and then ran for Congress in 1976. Right. And... Uh, you know, and I was on the Rose Bowl team, and, and we beat Minnesota 17 to 7. That was, the, they were number one in the nation. So the Helms Foundation, you see the sign over here, right? Uh, you know, years later said Washington should have been number one because they didn't take into account the postseason games. And uh, so we beat number one, so we got to be number one. How strongly do you feel, Congressman, about how the athletic department and the academic departments here at the University of Washington really shaped who you are today? Because ideally, you know, you strive to be your best, and that really pushed you into that role. Well, I, when I, I came here, I was really focused on, on academics. I was worried right. that w was I smart enough to do this, and I had a... A, a, a lady who was uh, Romaine Nicholson, who was the librarian at Olympic College in Bremerton, she gave me a, some write everything down, take detailed notes. And I did that. In the first quarter, I was on the dean's list. And the coaches called me down and said, 
are you cheating? <laughs> I mean, nobody's <laughs> ever been on the Dean's List their first quarter here. A right. high five. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I know the athletic department from being in it myself puts a lot of effort on academics, and we had study tables and, and you name it. You've got to be proud to hear some of the names that are coming out here today. Like Rio Barber, our reporter down here, was talking yeah. to Danny Shelton right. and a lot of the football players that are making huge strides in the NFL. Well, that the, 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 we had some phenomenal players last year, and and uh, great defense, and that was what we were known for in those days was was defense. And uh, I led the team on tackles in '61, '62, and uh, I was also the scholar athlete for the conference. And uh, so, I, if I had to give some advice to the young people today, is to make sure you get your degree. Yeah and get your education, take it seriously, and, uh, and, and you know, because that's gonna carry you through the rest of your life. And also learn how to write. If, yes. And I wasn't, that was not my strength, but you know, for Winning people, elections is your strength. For people <laughs> on, the, you know, working on my staff, I always wanted to know, could yeah. they write? Because that's such an important skill in every aspect of life. Real quick before we go, you remember your graduation day. What was Absolutely. it like? Absolutely, it was phenomenal. We had some incredible parties, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, it was 1963. My jersey was 63 too. There you go. Easy. And my email 63huskies.com. Uh, nice. Uh, Gmail.com. You know you're uh, going to get flooded with email right now. We had a lot of parties, and uh, and uh, I was a Sigma Nu, uh, and uh, we we had a great group, and and uh, it was just a phenomenal remembrance of, of what a great day that was all right norm dix congressman for so long you've done great things for the state and thank you thank so you. much for for dropping by glad to be on your show thank yes. you for nice being here you, you know norm we have one more special guest coming our way and we're going to talk to that person right when we come back from the purple carpet that is the president Anamari kause and we will get to her as this 140th yes. commitment since sarah rolls on yeah we're just a few minutes away keep it here Welcome back to the Purple Carpet. We are just about 10 minutes away from the start of the 2015 graduation. It is commencement day. It is Saturday. It is beautiful. And we have a very special guest with us right now. Yeah, that is President Anamari Kause. And Thank you were you. with us last year. And we're so excited to call you president right now and have <laughs> yeah. you sit here with us and talk to us about this role and what it means to the university. Well, I mean, you know, I am having so much fun right now. I mean, look at look at the stadium. It is going to be 
fuller than it's ever been before. Graduation is such a happy time, and it's such an honor for me to get to preside over these fabulous ceremonies. Yeah, we, we, have a, we had a stat a little while ago that said that uh, when you graduate from the University of Washington, you go on to bigger and better things, oh, and 82% graduation rate for the UW. Absolutely, and you know, we not only bring students in, we make sure they graduate. Yeah. It's, it's just incredible stuff here. And look how exciting this is. Look at all these people. Look at all the support of the family and friends who really a great support system for all these graduates for the last four to eight years. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is really a whole family thing. For many, it's their parents. For some of them, it's their children. Because we have a whole range of graduates that come to us from different stages in life. But they don't do it alone. This is really an event for everyone to celebrate. Yes. Tell us a bit how you chose the University of Washington in your road to the UW. Well, I was actually, I can, I can remember when I interviewed here. I was still in my 20s. It was my first time on the West Coast. I was, you know, my mom said, you're going as far away from home as you mm -hmm. possibly can. But I stood on Red Square. I saw Mount Rainier. And this is a place where you can dream big. And I just, you know, it was just the right thing for me. And there was no question. By the time I left my interview, I knew if I got the job, I was coming. Yeah, it, it, was, it was easy. You were sold the second you got here. A absolutely. I mean, it was really very, very quick. It didn't take long. And you were quoted for coming here, what it's done for you as a, a world of good, the University of Washington. Well, absolutely. I think that we talk a lot about how the university transforms the lives of students. And it absolutely does. But it does that for the faculty as well. You know, when I was in my 20s, I wasn't that much older than the students. I didn't know what my life was going to look like going forward. And I've grown up here. The opportunities that the University of Washington has given me to do research, to be involved in fabulous teaching, to have wonderful co-teachers, to have wonderful students and colleagues, it, it has made all the difference in my life. I, I, I have a question for you, and it may be difficult to answer. But you are at the top, you're, you're at the helm of the university. You are leading in an incredible university, one of the best in the world. Absolutely. Does that put a little pressure on you? How, how do you deal with that? Well, you know, the thing is that this is really a group enterprise. It really does take a village to make this university hum. And I have the best colleagues in the world, from faculty, staff, to students. And that's what makes it maybe not easy, but certainly fun. Yeah. I, is that why this is one of the last universities, there's only a couple out there that walk all of their students that want to? We have 14,000 graduating today, but we'll see a record number of what, about 56 yes. or 700 right. walking down on the carpet down there. Well, it really is. A lot of these students have had smaller graduation ceremonies in their departments and their colleges, but there's just something absolutely awesome, you know, that, you know, strikes you. It's just literally awesome to see that whole group out here and especially on this kind of beautiful day yes. and I you know whenever students ask me is it worth coming I say absolutely yes you will remember this for the rest of your life and, and real quick the future of the UW the future of the UW dub we like to say it's boundless because it really is um, we have we continue to do fabulous in every single realm and with the state legislature coming in with a good budget <laughs> yeah We'll be moving right ahead. All right. Tell us what you to say, though, real quick, to some of these graduates who are at here behind us, just a little bit scared. They're loading up back in the zone, getting ready to walk in. It's a cool day, but they're going into the real world. They are, and they're going into the real world really well prepared. The education that they've gotten here has been deep. It's been broad. It's been given them. It's giving them a set of skills that can really make them feel like they're going into the real world with a lot of confidence. And you've just seen. Uh, our, one of our graduates come back to get the Alumnus Dignatus right. Award. This is what the University of Washington prepares you for. We have a reporter down on the field. Her name's Rio Barber. Would you just say, take it away, Rio? Take it away, Rio. All right. 
Hey there, guys. We're over in the master section where I found a fellow seafarer princess, Natalie Hart. Natalie, tell us about all the colorful garb you have on today. Oh, most definitely. I have some honors cords here from the College Success Foundation here representing my sorority of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated and a lot of, uh, of the different cultural ones I'm wearing as well. Awesome. And do you have a shout out for any family? Oh, yes. Um, hi, mom. Hi, dad. I have my sisters, my sorority sisters, my fraternity brothers, and all the people in my program. This has been a wonderful year, and I'm so glad we're here. Absolutely. And at this time, I want to give a big shout out to my family out there in the stands. So my mom, I love you so much, and all my family that came in. Yes, let's get it. Go dogs. Go dogs, guys. Ready? Go dogs. And you know what? I did, I did promise you one thing before I left today, and that was a song. So here you are for all the congratulating graduates today. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think I'm down in every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can hey. see me running through that open door. I believe I can fly. All right, that's all for today. Thank you all so much. Back to you, Erin. Rio, that was amazing, and congratulations to you. I know that Gard and I couldn't sing that well, no. so you look stunning down there. A beautiful day for you and all your fellow graduates at the University of Washington in 2015. Hard to say we are here at the end of the graduation, and they're getting ready to walk, Gard. They are getting ready to walk. As we mentioned at the very top of the show, 5,700 plus 5,700 will walk in such a, a, an emotional day for so many people. Of course, the parents, all the friends, and, and family members, sisters and brothers here, little ones, big ones, people who've patted you on the back, who've cupped you up late at night so you could get through the test the, the following morning. It is such a, a big afternoon here for just so many people, Aaron. And let's not forget that people are watching this online at hashtag UWGrad2015. You're watching it on UWTV on Channel 27. So not only are there 50,000 people here at the Husky Stadium cheering these family and friends on, there's everyone all over the world and all over the country. Yeah, your commencement speaker will be Christine Gregoire, the former governor. That's starting right now. Thanks for joining us.